What's going on guys? Curry Shot here with a short analysis video. It's not going to be a full-blown VOD review. I really just want to highlight Soul Dynasty's early game in terms of almost full holding boss and uprising on this Numbani map. And I really want to highlight the composition that Soul Dynasty ran because I do feel like other teams like Houston Outlaws would really benefit from running a similar composition. And I actually think it's a meta counter in terms of the map of Numbani. Okay, so... The reason I chose this VOD is because Fletta's impact on this game as Widow made it so Soul almost full held first point Numbani here. So let's go ahead and look at this composition, okay? So in Numbani, prevalent, it's prevalent with, you know, standard dive or, you know, dive with Farah Mercy. And Widow, you know, can cover the possible ground of uh, Farah Mercy. And Junkrat, as you will see in this VOD, is a hard target to dive with standard dive compositions if he positions correctly, which he does. Note... What Zumba is doing here on D.Va is super important as the intel he provides will affect how Fleta, Weeked, and Ryuju Hong rotate in terms of positioning. So if you can't really read the names in this VOD or you're not familiar with all the players, Fleta is playing Widowmaker right here, Weeked is Junkrat, Ryuju Hong is Zen. So it's really important to note Zumba is down here. He's going to, going to go ahead and uh, micro missile spawn. That's not the important part. People are like, oh my god, look, he gets 3% ult charge from micro missing spawn. How smart? No, no, no. He's providing intel for uh, Fleta, Junkrat, and Rujahong on that Zenyata to go ahead and rotate accordingly, okay? So it's really common that, you know, if people are running Farah Mercy, they'll go Rappara all the way around to go ahead and line aside that way, line aside uh, hit scan that way. Or if they're running standard dive, you know, they can run it down mid here and then uh, dive that way, okay? So if they are running standard dive, Fleta can't stand up here on Widowmaker. He has to go ahead and drop. And Weekhead's positioning can go ahead and change in accordance to that too. He can go ahead and play the back steps as he can't get knocked off by a long-range concussive blast, okay? So that's the importance of going ahead and scouting. So if you if a team is not doing this or if, you know, for instance, uh, Shanghai does not do this, they just kind of sit here and... Um, yeah, Roshan sits here, and then the Diva sits here. It's it's very important that they pick this up. I mean, every amount of early information matters, and it will go ahead and help your team out in terms of how they rotate. Okay, and yeah, that's kind of one of Shanghai's problems too. Is they've had they were running double hit scan, and the, both the threats were on the same area. So I mean, it's pretty obvious where the teams are gonna dive and how that's gonna work out, right? So yeah. Anyway, I digress. But let's go ahead and look at the intel that Zumba gave them and talk about how Soul rotate and the benefit of doing so, okay? So it's really hard to see in this VOD. So I'm gonna go ahead and rewind a bit so we can get a better image of where Fleta does position. Fleta rotates here once he realizes they're running standard dive all the way over here. Winston's leap max range is around like 22 meters. So he'll be around this area. She can't really tether onto Widow with the Tesla cannon and not only that, but if he does jump here, he has a really good uh, chance of getting counter dove. And honestly, there's no pressure on point either, right? So it's, it's not a bad idea to position here as, you know, you're relatively safe from the rest of the team and hard dive, okay? So Fleta does a good job of doing that. Not only that, but if they do dive weekend as they do, you will see that he has a perpendicular line of sight. And what that means is think about uh, the street phase right here, okay? Think about you're playing Widow and then they have, you know, their entire front line here. Like, our, uh, let's say, Orion, even though that's not meta, okay? In the solo queue game, you might see that. You know, as a Widowmaker, it's really hard to go ahead and hit anything behind that, even if he doesn't have a shield up, because he can body block it, right? What happens is, when you have a perpendicular line of sight, you can pick and choose which heroes, let's say Mercy, Reinhardt, and whatever they're facing this way. As Widowmaker, you can pick and choose which heroes to hit. So, what happens is, if they dive weakhead, as you will see later on, here in a second, actually, why don't, why don't we play that now? At 11, 11, 30, I believe? You will see that backline is actually very, very vulnerable if they try to go ahead and heal frontline here. So he has this perpendicular line of sight and he has a clear shot on Mercy here. Note that D.Va is not going to matrix Widow here. She has to matrix her Winston as he's jumping straight into a Junkrat. So Fleta gets a free little hit there. He obviously doesn't kill the Mercy, doesn't get the headshot there. But he gets him low enough so D.Va can go ahead and finish off that kill, okay? So now let's talk about the rotation in terms... Let's rewind a bit and talk about the rotation early game after the intel that Zanba gives them on Junkrat and Ryu Jahong. And let's talk about where they play and why I think it's good in where they play, okay? So 
right where John, right where Winston dives, that's where Junkrat is positioned. So they're usually playing around this area. So I'm gonna put a J for Junkrat and Zen. So what this does is, since they're running standard dive, there's no long range concussive blast to go ahead and knock them off. So they can go ahead and play this door here. So it's really hard for Winston Diva to go ahead and jump this. They can get countered over again, or they're just playing in a very small area. They're susceptible to getting knocked off the map completely from a disengage with a concussive mind from Junkrat. Not only that, but this is actually a relatively safe position because again, they have Junkrat has a trap set up here. You know, they can't really break that right off the bat. And they have the mini health pack to work. Now, if Boston do overcommit to this fight, which they don't, they do a good job of not doing that, then they're in a small corridor with Junkrat here. And, you know, that's, you know, that's Junkrat Paradise, right? So, you know, normally this this would be a bad setup for a Junkrat to set here, you know, near, you know, versus a Far Mercy because he's very susceptible to getting knocked off the map as well as Zen. Not only that, but he's getting spammed out by rockets. But... In this scenario, it's a really good idea to position here as it sets up your Widow to have a perfect sight line and as well as giving you the advantage of, you know, working those small areas as Junkrat. As you will see, just clean up now. Uh, we get clean up on that Junkrat here in a second, okay? So let's talk about, well, how do we counter this then? How, like, how, what, what do we do versus this? You know, Boston really realized really late in terms of what to do versus this composition. And I feel like, this composition is a hard one to counter in the sense that it re requires a lot of coordination. There are a few different ways to counter this, but you would have to find one that fits your team identity in terms of being able to coordinate well enough with the proposed solutions. For instance, some teams could just pick their own Widow and deal with it that way. I mean, we've seen Pine do it, but let's not talk about that because that might not work all the time. So in the case of Boston, you could send Striker here on Tracer on the long flank, and he can get Widow that way. Widow's right here if you can't see it in the spectator mode, and pressure her that way, okay? And it's not so much that Soul Dynasty is letting her flank, it's just they don't have anything to punish it, right? I mean, Weekend is gonna be here on Junkrat, and basically, Boston can wait for pressure here main because guess what? Like, they can't really dive or dive them while Tracer's setting up for the flank and punish them because Widow won't have a sight line. Weekend's up here on Junkrat, and there's no real way to punish it. So they're not letting your flank, it's just part of the composition and they can't really do much about it at the initial flank, okay? So now that we got that out of the way, what the main concept is, as simple as it is, is trying to trade movement abilities with Widowmaker and setting up like a crossfire, let's say a crossfire dive, we'll call it, uh, with the Widowmaker. So you're trying to get her grapple hook out, uh, whether you trade Winston Leap, whether you trade uh, Genji Dash, whether you trade, uh, you know, just pressure with Tracer and get her grapple that way and you're trying to dive her that way, okay? So if she does, you know, grapple towards the team, you can jump on her that way. Or if she grapples, you know, away from the team, she's out of the fight and you can go ahead and uh, focus uh, what's up there, okay? So that's like the basic concept of it. And you'll see here in a second, Winston on, uh, Gamso and Winston being able to do this. I mean, they do pressure Widow and the way they kill her is basically they are able to Winston ult, and once they Winston ult, you know, he has his leap on a two second cooldown, cool down, so he's able to go ahead and get that uh, leap, uh, that grapple with his leap, and then Casper is able to jump on her with a dash since he still has it up, and they're able to kill her that way, okay? So, not only that, I mean, you could use the Diva Bomb, as we will see, uh, you know, Boston does that at the very end here, is they'll, they'll go ahead and uh, Galius will get an amazing Diva Bomb and kill her that way, but these are really ult reliant ways to deal with it. So in the case that you don't have ultimates, uh, probably the sending Tracer on the long flank is the best way to deal with it and uh, try to go for the 50-50 there. But if you do have ultimates, you can always work with Winston leaps and then Diva bombs in terms of getting grappled that way, okay? And then having your Genji set up and dive her right after that, okay? So that's it for this VOD review. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what other VODs and what other kind of an analysis videos you'd like to see in the future. Uh, right now, I'm currently LFT, looking for team. Uh, I was a professional League of Legends coach for three years. Uh, if you do need private coaching, I do offer that as well. My business email will be in the description. I will see you today in terms of Overwatch League content. Take it easy, guys.